One, two, three, four. It is South Carolina. And what was the story from South Carolina? Do y'all remember? You should remember. So there was um. Zoom in on it. Uh, city council. Really close. Mike on the right track. City council. <laughs> City council where um, there was no, it was all incumbents and there was nobody to oppose them. <laughs> this is really awkward. Um, and there was no one to oppose them, so they canceled the elections like right out. South Carolina actually had a situation, uh, one, two, three, four, <laughs> where in fact they had a certain number of seats and they didn't have enough, they didn't have enough challengers to basically warrant an election. And the debate was, do you need to have the election, even though it's guaranteed that the folks are going to win? Or, in fact, can you just cancel the election because they're basically guaranteed to win? Well, well, why is South Carolina significant? Because In uh, the context they, of write-in. They, they, they were the only state who had um, a, a senator elected as a write-in candidate. South Carolina and was... his name was Strom Thurmond. Strom Thurmond was the one... Wow, now he's, he's pointing at me to put points up there. Strom Thurmond was actually, for the, long, the longest time, the only write-in Senate candidate that won an election. And then a second state, as you corrected me previously, what was the second state? Alaska, Lisa Murkowski. Alaska, one, two, three. Three, four, exactly. Do you have anything else? Because I think Yasser wants to go deeper into the poll. Probably, and then so, so in the story that we were reading, yeah, uh, one of the citizens from that county got mad because he yeah. said, if I would have known, I would have thrown my name in there just so there could have been elections. He did actually say that. And what was the problem? Why? What? Because they have a rule where if it's a, a certain amount of time before the election, that if no one announces that. They, there can no longer be writing candidates. He, he missed the deadline yeah, is exactly what it was. He missed. One, two, three, four, missed the deadline. Go ahead, uh, touch the, uh, click it, I'm sorry. And you'll notice up here, South Carolina, you gave me the story. Did you have something else? He said it. Okay, go ahead, pick me a category. You have a healthy lead, and if you don't have any, I want to get bonus points, so you got to get something right somewhere. But well, how do you merit these points? Because sometimes you just be going all off crazy on some points and then they don't points. And please don't take off points. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, how, how, you know, how do you merit? Like, when, you you when you get something right, I give you points. All right. Go ahead, pick me a category. Something that Yasha will get right. <laughs> Annapolis trip one point. Oh. <laughs> Name of the Maryland Supreme Court. Yeah. The Maryland Court of it is the Court of Appeals. Click it. Go ahead. Yeah, Court of Appeals. Pick me a category. Well, I can't say more about it. It's a one-point question. No, okay. It's a one-point <laughs> question. Okay. What do you want to say? That there are seven roof. of them. The Chief Justice is Mary Ellen Barbera. They wear red robes. They wear red robes with the white. But it's not a <laughs> That's like it's three points point right question. there. I mean, it's a one point question. No, no, no. I'm going to take all points. This is a waste of time. Okay, pick me a category. Red okay. robes are the thing, remember. Red robes are the thing that makes the Maryland Court of Appeals distinctive. No other court does that, so keep that in mind. And then um, you did mention Chief Justice Barbera. She was the lady that we met with. Go ahead, pick me a category. Got to go. So we'll do state legislatures for three. State legislatures for three. List all you can. Here's your chance to come back. Unwed fathers. You have it. You've got it next. You've got it third. But y'all have it now. Five. Okay, so. Four. This Many. lady yeah, and she had sex with this guy, and she gave the child up for adoption. No, he didn't get contacted, right? And he didn't he get another contact. He got... <laughs> he found out yeah, about the it. child. Okay, so it was his ex-fiance. So basically, he got a letter from the quarter somewhere. I mean, from the he ladies attorney the talking about that uh, oh, adoption that papers that he didn't even knew that he thought had a baby. Oh, a guy yeah. actually was involved with a fiance, <laughs> and evidently they broke up. And after they had broken up, he did not realize it, but he was notified that in fact she had a child that he was the father of. She was, or he was, I should say, notified, and he was notified at the very end of the adoption process. And basically, they didn't want his permission. He really wasn't in a position to grant permission. Go ahead. They waited till the end so he couldn't, like, I mean, contest it. Contest anything about it because it was already at the end. Like, and then they have this thing that you have to file a. Uh, 
The unwed father registry. Go ahead. Okay, oh. talk. So basically, as, as if you have sex with a woman, then you have to register that you're a possible father to one of her kids, and that way you can be notified and get some kind of parental right over it. But if you don't register, then you have no right, and most states will not even contact you. Yeah, you're right on this. Basically, and what is the, the go ahead. In some state, um, let's say if your name appeared on a birth certificate, like they will send you a letter or something. We talked about that too. Okay, so what does all that mean? Uh, you're losing me. I don't know. Okay, on, on the understand on this, the unwed father registry basically said that in order to maintain, in, in order to maintain, in order to maintain your parental rights as an unwed father, you would have to register on this registry with every woman that you had sex with. And the basic idea behind this was, was that you're basically claiming that if something were to happen, you're going to have to be contacted so that you've got some say in the matter. So it's not about abortion because we talked about that, but effectively what it is, is you would be able to contest, say, for example, an adoption, or maybe you could claim custody, or as somebody had said in here, maybe you could be required to pay some form of child support if you registered for this. Go ahead. You're supposed to register in the state that you're in and also the state that your partner is in or wherever they might be. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You're going to have to register in your state. You're going to have to register in her state. You're going to have to register in any state that she may, in fact, go in order to cover all of the bases because you're really, the state is going to be following her, so you have to follow her with the registration. Anything else you want to tell me for? Isn't there a time limit to, like, at a certain amount of time after the birth, you can no longer register, so if you don't get informed, then you can't, like, change it. This depends on the state, and some of the states actually would say that it is after the actual birth where you could still can still maintain some rights. Some say that it is several weeks before the actual birth that you can maintain these rights. Anything else? Three, two, did you? Go ahead. No, we had next. No, no, he told me that he's raised his hand before Yeah, you. that was the question before. No. <laughs> Anyways, I was going to say, um... He knows it, too. Like, he's like, oh, shit. No, no, no. No, I was gonna I was gonna talk about oh, man, it's all pressure. I, I forgot. Four, <laughs> three, come back to me. Minus three. Uh, <laughs> go ahead, Yasha. Yes, go ahead, Yasha. Uh, this happened. Well, the woman was in Florida, and then the man was in Arizona when uh, he was notified. And he wasn't aware of this list That's or what? Yeah. He was not aware of this list. And he he did, did not ultimately have any rights. And, and there's one state, if you remember, that actually does it better than all of the other states. Indiana. Indiana is the state that does it better than all the others. So many of these states, if you'll recall, do you remember how many, how many of the, the unwed fathers will actually sign up in a typical state? Anybody? Five, four, three. It's usually about 50 a year, maybe. And in Indiana, it's actually closer to about 50 a week, I think. Meaning they really do really, really well with this. Go ahead, touch the house, Jacqueline Smith. If y'all at minus four now, and you're almost out of last place, pick me a category. No, no, garage, that's garage. You're, you're minus four. <laughs> pick me a category, gotta go. Oh, somebody. Uh, you. I didn't want to uh, uh, all right, uh, uh, parties and elections, uh, two points. Parties and elections for two. I need somebody to draw. This is really easy. Okay? This is what I need you. <laughs> yeah, go, go down this way. <laughs> I think there's a red marker on the, on the thing there, too. Can I, can I say the category? You can't say no. It's just it's just elections right. for two points. Okay, Starting on the eight. One more, one more time. Don't say it out loud. Don't say it out loud. Don't just say it out loud. Just that. Just that. Just that. All right. Uh, let, let me know when. If we answer, we can. They, they, after one minute, you have the chance to answer, okay? Let, let me know when. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I, I said ten seconds ago. Oh. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit. What the? How do you not know what that is? Bruh. But what the fuck is going on? He's being recorded. It looks like.
some kind of a crab? This, this, is, is, like a this is like a movie where you suddenly realize that like he's oh, super talented. Yeah, he can't write letters. <laughs> and no one knew he was talented at art before. Yeah, 25 right. seconds. Congress? Uh, <laughs> group is this? Your group got it. Yeah. Oh, wait, are we all guessing? What? She said US. No. She said US. She said US. No. Oh, United, United States. States, thank you. You gotta speak up, Jessica. <laughs> How much was that for? Two? I don't know. Oh my god, you're almost in the pocket. Oh wait, that's the wrong group. Yeah, let me make sure I get the right group. You gotta watch me about that. Okay, United States, here's the thing that I wanted y'all to deal with, and bear with me, because I want to make sure that I get this title right. This kind of overlaps, if you'll recall, with the Annapolis trip. You have it first, first hand I see next. The National Popular Vote Interstate Compact. I'm sorry, say that one more time. The National Popular Vote Interstate Compact. Y'all have it first, you've got it next. The National Popular Vote Interstate Compact. Okay, yes, you so got it. It basically states that it eliminates uh, the uh, electorals and actually uses the popular vote. It does use the popular vote, so, so explain this to no, me. No, drive through. All right. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, well, um, anybody in the group can when answer. We, when we vote for, for presidents, you yeah. know, it goes by electors. Each state. It, it does. Okay. So it goes by, by population. State, by population too. Okay. Because so the what's the problem with the that? The problem is that it's not proportionate. So they would rather do it's the pop. You know, it's the popular vote. It's, yeah. They want the. They rather choose the popular vote than what an old electoral system that was. Yeah, but why? Why is the pop? Well, what's the problem with using the electoral college? Anybody in the group can it's answer. It's outdated. I need a specific thing. It's fine. You can't, you can't win without being the popular vote. Yeah, the Electoral College sometimes will actually pick a winner without it being the person that won the popular vote. Yeah, because and, and a good example of that would be? Bush and Trump. Like, but, but, uh, like, uh, Bush and Trump. No, 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 so no, no, Bush no. in 2000 and Trump in 2016. Yeah. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Go uh, ahead. Sometimes you can already know who's going to win by, by election by saying who's going to win what state. So you know that the Republicans were going to win if they can get Ohio and North Carolina because of delegates. Why is it always going to be North Carolina? Yeah. Because it is. I know, that's what I'm saying. So you knew if they were going to win North Carolina and Ohio, you knew they were going to take the election. Okay, now I think vote. you're going off track, but go back to this interstate compact. They're trying to basically eliminate that. How's it going to work? Five. Basically, they're, they're going to give like their electoral votes to the uh, person who wins the um, popular vote. This compact is basically saying, one, two, we are going to sign off and we're going to give yeah. our electoral college votes to whoever it is that wins the popular vote. Doesn't matter if it's Democrat, doesn't matter if it's Republican. Yeah. Now, now they, they've got to get something before they're actually going to do this. Yes, but Maryland... How many, how many states have agreed to this? Uh, Five. Not too many. I, I, Four. Oh, not too many. That's good. Three, <laughs> two, one. Go ahead. Ten in D.C. Yeah, it is actually. One, two, ten states, and I think it is... Go ahead. California, Hawaii, Illinois, Maryland, Massachusetts, New Jersey, New York, Rhode Island, Vermont, and Washington, and the District of Columbia. And how many electoral votes is that? That is... Five, four, three, two... 165. It is 165. Yes, one, two. So what would make sense that they would need in order to be able to actually do this? They need to get more states in on the compact. How many more? <laughs> so they need 12 states? 10 plus a couple is 12? Four, three, anybody? Shannon says. You still have it, yeah. Shannon. They currently have 30.7% of the total electoral vote. Yeah, okay. And 61.1% of the votes needed to give the compact legal force. Okay, what they're looking to do on this is they're actually looking, I don't even get points on that. They're actually looking to make sure that you have a majority of the Electoral College represented. So if it's only like 10 states, well, that's not 270 Electoral College votes. So what they want is they want to get more than half, and then when they get to the point where they've got more than half, all of the states that have signed off are going to pledge to give their Electoral College votes to the Electoral College winner only if it would actually make a difference in the election. So, for example, if some of these states might be Republican and a Democrat would win, but 
just by themselves, you know, I, a Republican won their state, they're not going to do it. But if you actually have enough states that are going to add up to over 270, then they're going to do it so that you don't have the problem that Franco mentioned, which is basically saying the winner of the popular vote is now not going to win the Electoral College. Go ahead. Can I give details about like why the compact was created or whatever? You can try. So in, in the Bush v. Gore election in Florida, the, the election was actually won by around 500 to 600 votes. So the, that's true. So it was that decided the entire thing, and that was really disgusting to a lot of people because the country had around 30 million people at the time. And essentially, the presidency was decided. The country had 30 million people. <laughs> yes. What? Yeah, even was that you? That 300. Said what? No. It was. Yeah, yeah I, I don't think it's 30 million. 300 or 30, but whatever. But the the the, 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 the thing is, is that the you you the country. It was it was very unfair because.